Hello and welcome to Insight of Thalmology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another lecture. Today we are studying the extraocular movements and how do we move our eyes and the various types of extraocular movements which are seen in the eye. The eye movements are basically two types, uniocular that means occurring in one eye, binocular that means which occurs in both the eyes together. The uniocular movements are known as the ductions and the binocular movements are again classified into two types, versions and virgins. First, we shall be discussing about the uniocular movements that are deductions. In the ductions, there are various types of ductions. Per slide, we shall be discussing about two types of ductions uh, considering to one, uh, pertaining to one single axis. The first one that we discuss here is the adduction. Adduction is nothing but it is the inward rotation of the eye along the vertical axis. The vertical axis here is represented by the letter Z. The abduction is the outward movement that means the lateral movement of the eye along the vertical axis. The next type of movements that means ductions along the horizontal axis represented here by X are the supraduction and the infraduction. Supraduction is the upward movement of the eye along the horizontal axis and infraduction is the downward movement of the eye along the horizontal axis. Now what about the movements along the y-axis which is an axis passing perpendicular to the pupil. These movements are in cycloduction and the x cycloduction. In cycloduction is basically a rotatory movement which occurs along this y-axis which is also called the anterior posterior axis in such a way that the superior pole of the cornea is going to actually move medially. X cycloduction is totally opposite to that of in cycloduction. Here, the rotatory movement is such that the anterior posterior axis in which the superior pole of the cornea will move laterally. As I already told you that the movements are occurring along these three axes, the X axis, the Z axis and the Y axis. So you should be very careful that the X and the Z axis are present in one single plane and the Y axis is the anterior posterior sagittal axis which is going to the center of the pupil. The X and the Z axis are present in one single plane and that plane is called the listing plane. The Y axis which is the sagittal axis it is passing through the pupil and is perpendicular to the listing plane which is formed in this case by the X and the Z axis. All the X, Y and the Z axis they are going to meet at the center of rotation of the eyeball. Now as I told you about the ductions, the adduction and the abduction which are the horizontal movements are occurring along the Z axis. The elevation and depression also called the supraduction and the infraduction are occurring along the X axis. The extorsion also called the X cycloduction and the intorsion which is the in cycloduction they are occurring along the Y axis. Coming to the binocular eye movements, in binocular eye movements we have the versions and the virgins. The versions are the conjugate, synchronous, symmetric movement of the eyes in the same direction. That means both the eyes are moving in one single direction, either up, down, in or out. The virgins however are the disconjugate movements of the eye in which both the eyes move in the opposite direction. First, we shall be discuss, uh, discussing about the versions. To understand versions, we have to understand the movement or the actions of the various extraocular muscles. First, we shall discuss about the horizontal recti muscle. You can see that the insertion of the horizontal recti muscle, whether it is a medial rectus or the lateral rectus, is always uh, straight and vertical. This is in contrast with uh, to that of the superior rectus, superior oblique, inferior rectus and inferior oblique which actually form an angle to the visual axis. This I have explained in detail in my video on the extraocular muscle anatomy. Here you can see that the whether it is the medial rectus or it is the lateral rectus they are always parallel to the visual axis and as they are parallel to the visual axis they will always have one single action. So the insertion of horizontal rectus as I told you is straight and vertical. In primary position of gaze their muscle plane is coinciding that means parallel to the visual axis. They are not forming any angle to the visual axis. Along the Z axis therefore they will cause only the horizontal movements. That means the horizontal recti 
the medial rectus and the lateral rectus, they have only primary action. They do not have any secondary action or tertiary action. The medial rectus will cause the medial movement of the eyeball along the z-axis which is called adduction and the lateral rectus will cause abduction. So once you understand the movements of the uh, medial rectus and the lateral rectus, it becomes very easy to understand two types of versions. These two types of versions are dextroversion and levoversion. First, we shall see what is meant by dextroversion. Dextro refers to the right side. So dextroversion is looking towards the right. You can see both the eyes are looking towards the right in this picture. So what are the muscles which are helping us in dextroversion? You can see in the right eye, the right eye to achieve dextroversion actually has to abduct and which is the muscle which helps in abduction, it is the lateral rectus. Compared to that, the left eye actually has to adduct and which is the muscle which will help in adduction, it is the medial rectus. Therefore, the right lateral rectus and the left medial rectus together will contract and help you in achieving dextroversion. What about levoversion? Levoversion, levo refers to the movement of the eyeball towards the left side. And this will happen because of simultaneous contraction of the left lateral rectus which will help in the abduction and the right medial rectus which will help in adduction. Both of them acting together to achieve levoversion. Now we discussed about the horizontal recti muscle, their actions and the dextro and the levoversion. To understand the other types of versions, you should understand the actions of the vertical recti muscle. And what are the vertical recti muscles? These are the superior rectus and the inferior rectus. Now, the superior rectus and inferior rectus, they are not parallel to the visual axis and they are actually having an angle of about 23 degrees. So what happens is when the globe is abducted, that is abducted by 23 degrees, that is a time when the visual and the orbital axis will actually, uh, visual and the muscle axis will actually coincide. And during that time, they will have their primary action that is either the elevation or depression. Here, the elevation is caused by the superior rectus and the depression is caused by the inferior rectus. Now, what if the globe was to, uh, was to adduct by 67 degrees? When the eyeball moves to 67 degrees, the angle between the visual and the orbital axis now will become 90 degrees and the movement which will occur is the rotational movement. Here, the rotation movement means the intorsion and the extorsion. The intorsion is caused by the superior rectus and the extorsion is caused by the inferior rectus. Now here, so what is the optimal position for the globe for testing the function of vertical recti muscle? It is the abduction. Now what is meant by the optimal position of the globe for testing? Now we have seen in this case that the muscle can be present in the primary gaze, the muscle can be present in the abducted gaze or adducted gaze where it has different actions accordingly. So in which gaze are you going to test the muscle? The muscle is going to be tested in the abducted gaze here because that is a time when the visual axis and the orbital axis are coinciding and the muscles are acting as elevator or depressor. So here we are talking about the superior rectus and the inferior rectus. Let us try to understand this with the diagram. In the first picture you can see that here we have the superior rectus and the superior rectus is actually forming an angle of 23 degrees with the visual axis. Now what happens when the muscle undergoes abduction by this 23 degrees? You can see the visual axis and the muscle axis will now coincide. As they coincide, this becomes the optimal position for testing the muscle and the action of superior rectus because it is inserted anterior to the equator, it is going to pull the eyeball upwards and cause elevation. What about when the muscle rotates by 67 degrees? Now the initial position was here, so it rotated uh, 67 degrees from the visual axis so the total angle now becomes the 90 degree and here the muscle is acting as an intorter. Coming to inferior rectus, so this is as if you are looking from down. The inferior rectus is also inserted like this below the inferior oblique. Okay, and this is also forming an angle of 23 degrees. So similarly, when this muscle is going to abduct, abduct, it is going to cause depression by pulling the uh, eyeball downwards. And when it is going to cause adduction of 67 degrees, the angle will become now 90 degrees and the muscle action will be mainly the torsional action which is extorsion. Now at this point remember that superiors will always cause intorsion and the inferiors will always cause extorsion. So this picture here shows you the superior rectus as if you are looking from top. The superior rectus is forming an angle of 23 degrees with the visual axis. Now the main field of action is abduction. What if this superior this eyeball is abducted by a 23 degree angle like this? 
what is happening the visual axis and the muscle axis are now parallel to each other so what will be the motion the action of the muscle will be now causing elevation and that that is why the main field of action is abduction now what about the inferior rectus the inferior rectus will cause depression in the abducted gaze now what about if the muscle if the eyeball is adducted by 67 degrees you can see the angle now is 90 degrees and therefore at this position the main action is the rotational action and here the eyeball is rotating medially and therefore what we are dealing with is intorsion this is caused by the superior rectus what about the inferior rectus the inferior rectus will cause extorsion in the adducted eye case now this should be very clear by now that superior rectus is causing elevation inferior rectus is causing depression in the rotation movement they are causing intorsion and extorsion respectively whereas there is a third action also which is called adduction and this is the tertiary action of the muscle tertiary action of the vertical recti both of them together are causing adduction so you can see that although the tertiary action is adduction both the superior rectus and the inferior rectus will cause their elevation and depression in abduction and that becomes the optimal position or the optimal gaze to test the muscle after this we shall be discussing about the obliques muscle action the oblique muscles are the superior uh, oblique and the inferior oblique they form an angle of about 51 degrees with the visual axis in this case when the globe is adducted unlike the abduction in the superior rectus and inferior rectus here when the globe is adducted by 51 degrees the visual and the orbital axis will coincide and here the muscle will act as elevator or a depressor here again you can see that the elevator in this case is the inferior oblique and the depressor here is the superior oblique. Now what happens if the globe was to abduct by another 39 degrees? The angle between the visual and the orbital axis will become 90. So here the rotation movements will happen. So intorsion always superiors. So superior oblique will cause intorsion and the inferior oblique will cause extorsion. So what will be the optimal position of the globe for testing the function of obliques muscle? Here it is the adduction because on adducting that means medial rotation along the y axis the visual and the orbital axis are coinciding. Let us look at this uh, diagram and understand what we have just read. So as you can see that this is a superior oblique muscle you can see the superior oblique changes its direction at the trochlea and gets inserted below the superior rectus. The angle between the visual axis and the superior rectus is about 51 degrees. The superior oblique is situated medially. On adduction of the eye by 51 degrees, you can see that the visual axis which is passing through the center of the pupil and that of the muscle axis, they are both becoming parallel to each other. And it is at this point that the muscle will actually cause depression or elevation. And when the muscle is actually abducted, abducted, the angle between the visual axis and that of the muscle you can see has become almost about 90 degrees and here the muscle will cause intorsion or the tertiary action. The same thing applies also to the inferior oblique. So this picture is as if you are looking at a patient uh, head dissected and you are looking from down. So from the down you can see that this is the inferior oblique muscle. The inferior oblique muscle is also forming an angle of 51 degrees and follows the same principle of the superior oblique muscle action. Let us understand this with few animations. So this is the superior oblique muscle. This is the trochlea at which it is actually changing its direction, inserting at an angle of 51 degrees from the visual axis. Now the main field of action as I told you is the adduction because in adduction you can see the visual axis and the muscle axis are actually coinciding. So what, have, what is the action of the superior oblique muscle in adduction? It causes depression. Now why does it cause depression? Because it is situated, it is inserted behind the equator. Once it gets inserted behind the equator, you can see that the muscle as it contracts, it is going to pull the posterior part of the eyeball up. And when the posterior part of the eyeball goes up, the anterior part of the eyeball will go down. And therefore what we see is the depressive action of the superior oblique. What about when the muscle is abducted by 39 degrees, so the total angle will become 90 degrees. Here the muscle will cause intorsion. You can see the eyeball is rotating towards the nose. Here also it is rotating towards the nose medially and that is called intorsion. And then of course there is a tertiary action as well. The tertiary action of the superior oblique which is similar to that of inferior oblique is abduction. Now let's talk about the inferior oblique with some animation. 
So the inferior oblique is actually going to cause elevation of the globe. Again, the same principle. As you can see, when the eye is uh, adducted, okay, the visual axis will coincide with the muscle axis. And as the inferior oblique is going to contract, it is going to pull the, the posterior part of the eyeball down and the anterior part of the eyeball will go up. So what we see is elevation. Next, another type of action which happens in abduction by the inferior oblique is the extortion. As you can see here, the extortion means that the eyeball is rotating away from the center midpoint uh, or the nose and that is called extortion. So this view is actually from, uh, from the below. And of course, the tertiary action is the abduction, that is movement of the eyeball outside. So as you can see here, the main actions of the superior oblique and the inferior oblique uh, or the primary action is actually the intorsion and extortion. However, we test the muscle for depression and elevation and that is done in the uh, optimal position of the gaze for testing of superior oblique and inferior oblique and that is the adduction because in adduction the muscle plane and the visual plane will be all parallel to each other. However, the tertiary action of the muscle is abduction and this is same uh, this is similar to superior oblique and the inferior oblique so i hope that is clear once you have understood that now let us go back to the version so we already told you what is dextroversion what is leverversion now we'll talk about the other type of version what about supraversion supraversion is the upward movement of the eyeball as the word supra means up it is also called the direct elevation because you're directly moving from the primary gaze to the up gaze now, what are the muscles which were actually causing the upward gaze? If you remember, in the recti, we had the superior rectus and in the obliques, we had the inferior oblique. The reason why they cause the uh, elevation, I already explained to you. So, to, to, to achieve a supraversion, we need bilateral contraction of superior rectus and bilateral contraction of the inferior oblique. What about infraversion? Infraversion is the direct depression because directly from the primary gaze, you are going downwards so the downward movements of the eyeball is called infraversion and this happens because of the muscles which were causing the inferior movement of the eyeball so what were these in the recti the inferior rectus and in the obliques it was the superior oblique so bilaterally both the inferior rectus and both the superior obliques are going to contract and bring about infraversion what about dextro elevation so dextro elevation means that you are turning the eyeball towards right and also upwards okay so that is called right upward movements of the eyeball here to achieve the right upward movement that is dextro elevation the right eye has to actually abduct okay abduct and then move upwards so which was the muscle which was causing elevation in abduction it was the superior rectus right so as i told you the superior rectus and the inferior rectus the optimal position for testing the gaze is the abduction abduction therefore the right eye has to abduct and go up so here the superior rectus is acting however in the left eye you can see the eye has to adduct that is a d d duct okay adduct and the, the muscles which are action, acting in adduction are the superior and the inferior oblique and out of these obliques, which is the oblique which will cause elevation? That is the inferior oblique. Therefore, for to achieve dextro elevation, we need simultaneous contraction of the right superior rectus and the left inferior oblique. Now, levo depression should become easy for you. Levo depression means levo is left, depression is downwards. So, the left downward movement of the eyeball is called levo depression. And this will happen because of simultaneous contraction of the right superior oblique and the left inferior rectus. And why is that so? So in the right eye, what is the eye doing? Eye is actually causing adduction and then going downwards. So what is the muscle which will act, which will cause depression in adduction? It is the obliques, that is superior oblique. What is the muscle which will act depression in abduction? That is the inferior rectus. What about the versions in the rotational movement? So we have dextrocycloversion. Dextro means the rotatory movement along the anterior posterior axis in which both the superior poles of the eyeball are going to move towards the right. That is called dextrocycloversion. If you notice this, the right eye to achieve dextrocycloversion is actually undergoing extortion. And always it is the inferiors which will cause extortion. And primarily it is the obliques. So the inferior oblique in the right eye 
and if you see the left eye it is the superior oblique which will cause intorsion the left eye is actually undergoing the intorsional movement so to achieve dextrocycloversion the muscles which are acting is in the right eye we have the inferior oblique and in the left eye we have the superior oblique what about the levocycloversion levocycloversion means rotation towards the left side so here the left eye will undergo now extorsion and the right eye will undergo intorsion to achieve both the eyes to undergo levocycloversion so in the right eye it is the superior obliques because superiors always intort and in the left eye it is the inferior oblique because the inferiors always extort so with this we end the versions coming to the vergences vergences when both the eye movements are in the opposite direction okay and this is called a disconjugate movement these movements are called vergences in which we have two types convergence and divergence as the name suggests convergence means both the eyes are going to converge towards each other as you can see here both the eyes are looking towards the nose converging and the muscle which will help in convergence is the medial rectus of both the eyes the next movement is the divergence the both the eyes will actually diverge from the nose and the muscles which will cause divergence are the lateral rectus muscle finally let's end with the important positions of the gaze the positions of the gaze are the primary position of the gaze secondary position of the gaze tertiary position of the gaze now the primary secondary tertiary are together called the diagnostic positions of the gaze the fourth type of gaze is the cardinal position of the gaze now what is meant by the primary position of the gaze the primary position is assumed when the eye is fixating at a distant object straight ahead with the head erect so the central gaze is actually the primary gaze position what about the secondary position from the primary gaze position if you move straight up or straight down or straight to the right or to the left forming a cross that is called secondary positions of the gaze so secondary positions are the elevation depression levoversion and the dextroversion what about the tertiary positions of gaze here not just are you, are you moving the eyeball horizontally but also vertically so all your dextro elevation levo elevation dextro depression levo elevation and levo depression all these are going to form the tertiary positions of the gaze so together as you, if you can see there are about nine diagnostic position of the gaze so here the primary one the secondaries and then we have the tertiary positions of the gaze so in total we have about nine diagnostic position of the gaze but are we going to test all these nine no we test only six we test them in such a way that in each position of the gaze we are testing only one single muscle such that all the 12 extraocular muscles will be tested individually in their main field of action so what are the six position of the gaze if you would remember that the recta will always act in abduction okay so what i mean to say is that the main field of action of the recta is in abduction therefore the superior rectus is tested in the abduction and elevation and the late inferior rectus is tested in abduction when it causes depression the lateral rectus will definitely cause the abduction the medial rectus cause adduction and the inferior and the superior obliques will cause elevation and depression but in adduction so this picture actually represents the same thing you can uh, see that the medial recti are causing the adduction the inferior oblique is causing the elevation but in adduction the superior oblique and the superior uh, the superior oblique of both the sides are causing depression in adduction the superior recti of both the sides and the inferior recti are causing elevation and depression in abduction the lateral recti are actually causing the abduction so so what will be your six cardinal position of the gazes you tell the patient to first cause uh, to have the dextro version so the first is dextro version second is dextro elevation then you have dextro depression again come back to the primary gaze then do a levo version levo elevation and levo depression so these are the six cardinal positions of the gazes three on the either side of the primary gaze you do not consider the direct elevation and direct depression as the cardinal position of gaze because if you see here there are two muscles which are acting per eye so you do not know exactly which muscle are you testing are you testing superior rectus 
or are you testing inferior oblique when the eye is elevating directly up when the eye is depressing directly down are you testing inferior rectus or superior oblique we do not know exactly so therefore to test these muscle individually we will rather do the test in dextro depression or dextro elevation or levo depression and levo elevation compared to the direct elevation and direct depression so this was about the cardinal positions of the gaze as you can see the testing was done in an edge pattern from the primary gaze you shifted towards a dextro version then did a dextro elevation dextro depression again you went to lever version lever elevation and lever depression so the testing is in the form of a letter h coming finally and ending this video video uh, with some mnemonics always remember that superiors are always in totters superior rectus superior oblique they are in totters inferiors are always extorters inferior rectus inferior oblique they are extorters that means they will cause extortion obliques will act in adduction that is their optimal position for testing or the cardinal position in which you test them but the tertiary action of obliques is abduction the recti will act in abduction but the tertiary action is adduction so i hope that is clear that's all for today thank you and have a nice day